my favourite tools in Photoshop. What's up YouTube and welcome back to my channel. If you're new to this channel on here we talk about everything to do with food photography so if that interests you click subscribe down below. A few weeks ago I did a video on how to extend backgrounds in Photoshop and this is a really useful video but a few of the tools I mentioned in that video I didn't really get the chance to go through and explain exactly how they work. So if you're quite new to Photoshop watch this video and then check out that one after because in this video I'm going to go through a few of those tools, a few extra tools as well and explain exactly how I use them and when I would use them. So Photoshop is an amazing software, but there is a lot to go through and learn with it. I mean, I've been using it for about 12 years now and I don't think I know everything there is to know about Photoshop. It's absolutely massive. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna jump onto Photoshop so I can show you as I use and it go through exactly what I'm doing. Here in Photoshop, I've got open a few different images to show some of my favourite tools and how to use them. This one is a nice picture of some French toast that I've done, but a few of these crumbs here, they just, I think they can be a bit distracting. There's not enough of them for them to look like they're there on purpose. So if you want to get rid of them. One tool that I used in the background extend video was the patch tool. This is a really great tool to get rid of things in your images that we want to hide without it kind of looking really obvious. The way the patch tool works is you select this icon here and then draw around what you want to get rid of. So this really dark crumb here is a bit distracting. So now we've got the area selected, you drag across to something you want to fill with the area. So say just plain white, and then it does it quite softly. It kind of blends it for you. So let's do the same thing with this here. And then I'm gonna pick up some of the line to make it look more realistic, and it'll blend it nicely. So say I did it here, did that it would look blurry because it blending and hope that makes sense so I'm just gonna go ahead and just clear up these crumbs and there we have no crumbs but looking perfect so here in this area there was a crumb but I filled it with some of this some of this marble effect and it kind of used its own mind to figure out exactly what should be there very clever tool for this next image I'm going to use the spot healing brush this is another really clever tool. It works slightly like the patch tool, but you don't choose what is filled. So for this one, I'm gonna get rid of this hair here. So as you've probably seen in a few of my videos, I've got two very lovely, very clingy, big golden retrievers. And unfortunately, I have to check in images a lot of the time that there's no dog hair about because it just gets everywhere. But there is one here and I don't want that in the picture. So I'm gonna use the spot healing, the <laughs> the spot healing brush to correct this image and we just select that. It's the same area as the patch tool but it's this one here. To make the brush smaller or bigger you can use the close square bracket to make it bigger and the open square bracket to make it smaller. So just get it a good size for you and then just go over what you want to change and it uses its own mind, its own clever Photoshop brain to correct it. So it's got rid of the hair, it's picked the area around the hair to fill it in looking like nothing's changed. So as you can see there, that is a really, really clever tool. You don't need to decide where the information is coming from, it will do that for you. A really great one for small areas in awkward places like that, around all of that cauliflower rice. It would have been quite fiddly for me to have tried to decide exactly what should be there. So lovely picture of cookies here. And the next tool I'm going to show you is the clone tool. So again, I use this tool in the extend your background video and it's quite a trickier one to use than the other two I've already shown you. This one, we're just looking for the clone stance. It's just here. And what this one will do is it will copy exactly over what you choose to be copied over. Unlike the spot healing and the pattern tool where Photoshop sort of decides roughly and it does it quite softly. This will do it hard and exactly what you're choosing. What I'm gonna do for this image is I'm going to get rid of this chocolate chip here. So I'm gonna click Alt and then choose an area without a chocolate chip. And then I'm going to copy over. If you feel like it's not looking quite right, just maybe pick a different area. 
and then blend again. What can sometimes help is after using the clone tool, just to make it look a little bit more realistic and look a bit softer, you can just use the pattern tool to kind of blend it back in. So we've just removed a chocolate chip there, but I can also add in more chocolate chips. Now I'm gonna take one from this cookie and I'm gonna move it over here. If only we could do that in real life. And again, I can select a chocolate chip. So the important thing to remember with this tool is it's copying over exactly what you've selected, but it will also move with you. So now I've done this, if I start going up here, you can see it's also moved up the cookie with me and is on the top of the other cookie next to it. I've just done a quick example with some chocolate chips on a cookie, but you can copy over absolutely anything. If I wanted another cookie somewhere, I could add in another cookie. It's as easy as that. The main thing to remember with the clone tool is to be copying over, to think realistically about what should be copied over. So with the cookie, I wouldn't want to copy over the edge into this area because it's going to be a different color and it's not going to look right. With the clone tool, you're controlling it. If you're not liking what Photoshop is trying to copy over with things like the spot healing brush, you can control it yourself with the clone tool. A lot more useful for really fiddly areas in images. Like I showed you in the expand your background video, I had to go around a hand and I wouldn't have been able to do that with a pattern tool. So that's when you'd use the clone tool because it's a lot fiddlier. Those three tools are all quite similar in how they work and what they're doing to the image. However, they will be used in slightly different ways and for slightly different reasons. The next one I'm going to show you is completely different and that is the dodge and burn tool. And I think this is a really great, again, very clever tool in Photoshop. You'll find the dodge and burn tool here. So dodge and burn. What the dodge does is it lightens the image and burn will darken the image but you paint on exactly where you want this and you select exactly what is going to be brighter or darker in the image. So the way we do this is go to range. So if you select the midtones, it's only going to change the midtones in the area that you paint. If you chose the shadows, it's only going to lighten the shadows in the area that you paint and highlights will only change the highlights in the image. You also can select the exposure, which is how much it's changing. Now I'm gonna to go to shadow. So we're gonna just lighten the shadows, but it's not gonna change the lighting on anything else in the picture, only the shadows. So what you do is you draw it in. You just go over all the shadowy areas. The shadows are lighting up without actually affecting any of the cookie. Another way we can use this is to really make highlights pop in an image. So I'm going to keep the dodge tool selected, but I'm going to go down here and go to highlight. So this is only going to be changing the very brightest part of our image. So say you want to draw attention to these highlights in the image. With highlights selected, you can really just make those highlights pop. And also it works quite well for things like this fig. If you go around the outside, which is quite a white, it will make that fig a little bit brighter without affecting the dark outer skin of the fig. And things like these plants can make them brighter. So there, it's only been affecting the highlight in the syrup instead of the whole image. So here we've got some vegetable gnocchi. Here the cheese is a bit too bright and these gnocchi are a bit too bright. So with the burn tool now, which is gonna make them a bit darker. You can go to highlight. So with that, we can just maybe bring back some of that cheese and the highlights on the knocky, just so they're not too bright. There are my favorite tools in Photoshop. So some of the ones that I use the most when it comes to my photography. I know I've not managed to get the chance to do many big shoot videos recently. With us moving house, it's packing and finding the time to do everything is getting a little bit hectic. As I am moving house tomorrow, next week's video should hopefully, fingers crossed, be a home studio tour in my new home. So stay tuned for that. I've got so many plans for videos in the new studio and new house. But if there's something that you really want to see, let me know in the comments below and I'll definitely get around to filming that. Bye guys. <laughs>